dear students today let us start a new chapter complex numbers we have already studied the complex numbers in first few sessions in this class we will uh, solve problems up to c level so before i go to problems first let us discuss the synopsis uh, let us uh, relearn whatever the things that we have already learned in uh, complex numbers in first few sessions now the basic definition a number of the form x plus i y where x and y are real numbers and i called as iota that is equal to root of minus 1 is called a complex number any number of the form x plus i y where x and y are real numbers and i is equal to root of minus 1 is called the complex number usually a complex number is denoted by z z is equal to x plus i y this one complex number is denoted by z The set of all complex numbers is denoted by C. Capital C stands for the set of all complex numbers. Just like, as we know, n the set of all natural numbers, z the set of all integers, q the set of all rationals, r the set of all reals, and c is the set of all complex numbers. So I said any number of the form x plus i y where x and y are real numbers and i is equal to root of minus one is called a complex number. So if I take four, is it a real number? The answer yes, of course it is a real number which is well known. Now the question is, is it a complex number? Yes, it is a complex number because you can write four as four plus i into zero. So it is of the form x plus i y where x and y are real numbers. Four and zero are real numbers. So this is a complex number. So what this suggests is that every real number is a complex number. You give a give a any real number, you write that as uh, that real number plus i into zero. Or if you don't want plus, you can write minus also. Four minus i into zero. So any number, uh, any real number can be expressed with, as uh, that real number plus i into zero or minus i into zero, which means you are uh, writing it in the form x plus i y. This suggests that every real number is a complex number. We already know that n is a subset of z. That is, the set of all natural numbers is a subset of the set of all integers, and set of all integers is a subset of q, the set of all rationals, and q is a subset of uh, r, the set of all reals. And now we have come to know that set of all real numbers is uh, a subset of complex number because. The every real number is a complex number. Hence, the set of all real numbers is a subset of the set of all complex numbers. Okay. Now, in this complex number, when I write z is equal to x plus i y, here x is called the real part of z. Real part of z is denoted by r e of z. This is equal to x. Real part of z is x, and we call y as the imaginary part of z. Imaginary part of z is equal to y. In the complex number x plus i y, x is called the real part and y is called the imaginary part of this complex number. Okay. Then we say a complex number is purely real if its imaginary part is zero. For example, if I take five, five is it a complex number? Yes, because I write five as five plus i into zero. So look at this. In this, the real part is five and the imaginary part is zero. So this is a complex number which is purely real. A complex number in which the imaginary part is zero is called a purely real number, or a complex number which is purely real. Or it need not be positive only; it can be negative also. For example, if I take minus two, minus two. I can write minus two as uh, minus two plus i into zero. So this is also a complex number where the imaginary part is zero. So such a complex number is called purely real. Okay. I repeat, any complex number whose imaginary part is zero is called purely real. Then, on the other hand, a complex number whose real part is zero is called purely imaginary. For example, if I take four i. Five i minus i minus six i, etc. Look at all these complex numbers. These are all complex numbers whose real part is zero. I can write four i as zero plus four i, zero plus five i, zero minus i, zero minus six i. You can compare that with the x plus i y. You will see that in all these complex numbers, x is equal to zero, which means real part is zero. 
So any complex number whose real part is zero is called purely imaginary. Okay. So if I write five minus two i, what is the real part of this complex number? Real part is five, and the imaginary part is minus two. Don't write minus two i. Imaginary part is only minus. Then if I write uh, four, then what is the real part of this complex number? Real part is four. What about imaginary part? Imaginary part is zero because I write four as four plus i into zero. So x plus i y x is four y is zero. Real part is four and the imaginary part is zero. This complex number is purely real. Okay, then. So after this, let us say what is the conjugate of a complex number. Conjugate of a complex number. If z is equal to x plus i y, z is equal to x plus i y, then the conjugate of z is denoted by z bar. Z bar that is equal to x minus i y. X minus i y. So now how to find the conjugate of a complex number? So you write the real part as it is and change the sign of the imaginary part. If z is equal to x plus i y, then z bar, the conjugate of z, is given by x minus i y. Real part of z and real part of z bar will remain the same, and real part of z, imaginary part of z and imaginary part of uh, z bar, z bar, which is the conjugate of z, will be negative of each other. Okay. So now, for example, if I give you z is equal to three plus two y. Then if I ask you to find out z bar, what do you do? Z bar is equal to three minus two i. Then if I give you i and ask you to find out its conjugate, so i I write as zero plus i. Then I call it as z. Its conjugate z bar is equal to zero minus i. In other words, minus i. Then what is the conjugate of five? Conjugate of five. Don't write this as minus five, which is not true because five is a purely real. I mean, it's a complex number which is purely real. I can write five as uh, five plus i into zero. Then its conjugate z bar will be equal to five minus i into zero. What's the difference between five plus i into zero and five minus i into zero? There is absolutely no difference between them. So that five will remain as five only. Which means, if a complex number is purely real, then z bar is equal to z. So please make a note of that. Uh, if uh, A complex number is purely real, then z bar is equal to z. Okay. So we can say that is another definition of a purely real number, a purely real complex number. A complex number is purely real if its conjugate is equal to that given complex number. Okay. Now if I take the conjugate of z bar again, what I am going to get? So look at this example. Here we saw z is equal to three plus two i, and there was z bar as three uh, minus two i. Now what I want is I want the conjugate of three minus two i. I want the conjugate of z bar. So conjugate of z bar, that is z bar whole bar, I say, that is equal to. So how to find the conjugate of a complex number? Write the real part as it is, three i right, and uh, change and change the sign of the imaginary part. Here the imaginary part is minus two. So change the sign of the imaginary part. It will become plus two. So three plus two i. Z bar whole bar three plus two i. We got that three plus two i is nothing but z itself. So from this I can write z bar whole bar is equal to z. That is, if I take one complex number, then I will find out its conjugate. After that, again, if I find its conjugate, then we will get back to. The original complex number. In other words, we can say z bar is the conjugate of z, and z is the conjugate of z bar. Okay. Then, uh, let us say z one is equal to. X one plus uh, i y one and z two is equal to x two plus uh, i y. Then these two complex numbers, two complex numbers, z one is equal to z. We say that uh, two complex numbers are equal if and only if 
the real part of this complex number is equal to the real part of the second complex number and the imaginary part of the first complex number is equal to the imaginary part of the second complex number so two complex numbers are equal only if real part of first complex number is equal to the real part of the second complex number and the imaginary part of the first complex number is equal to the imaginary part of the second complex number in other words that one is equal to z2 we imply that x1 is equal to x2 and y1 is equal to y2 if this happens then only we can say that two complex numbers are equal then inequality in case of complex number does not arise you cannot say 2 plus i is less than 3 plus 2i this is wrong you cannot compare two complex number which you cannot say which complex number is lesser which is greater you can compare two complex numbers only if those two complex numbers are purely real i mean i am talking about purely real means say 2 and 3 which means i am actually comparing two real numbers only there we can say 2 is less than 3 in general we cannot compare two complex numbers ok then let us say how to find the sum of two complex numbers let me take z1 as x1 plus i1 and z2 as x2 plus i1 then z1 plus z2 z1 plus z2 is equal to x1 plus i1 plus x2 plus i1 so i can write this as x1 plus x2 plus from the remaining two terms i will take i as common factor that will give you i into y1 plus y2 so observe we have taken z1 as x1 plus i y1 and z2 as x2 plus i y2 both are complex numbers both are complex numbers means x1 and y1 are real numbers and x2 y2 are real numbers so here x1 plus x2 sum of two real numbers is again a real number y1 plus y2 sum of two real numbers it is that is also a real number so this is also of the form x plus i y right so what does this suggest is that when i add two complex numbers the sum what i am going to get is also a complex number so from this we can conclude that sum of two complex numbers is a complex number how do we add the two complex numbers just add the corresponding uh, real parts plus i into sum of the uh, imaginary parts that will give you sum of these two complex numbers then what about z1 minus z2 z1 minus z2 so z1 minus z2 i want to subtract these two x1 plus i y1 minus of x2 plus i y2 that's equal to okay so take now if i simplify this i am going to get x1 minus x2 plus i y1 minus i y2 i take i as a common factor so that will give you i into y1 minus y2 this is z1 minus z2 now we observe x1 minus x2 x1 and x2 are the real parts of z1 and z2 respectively which means x1 and x2 are two real numbers their difference is also a real number similarly y1 minus y2 being the difference of two real numbers this is also a real number so i can say we can compare this with x plus i y so this is also a complex number okay next multiplication of two complex numbers before i discuss that uh, let us uh, have a look at uh, that i i i said i is equal to root of minus one square root of minus one which is called an imaginary number okay iota now what is i square i square is equal to root of minus one whole square that will be equal to minus one i cube i cube i can write as i square into i i square is equal to minus one into i so this will give you minus i minus one into i is minus one then i power four i power four can be written as i square whole square i square is equal to minus one minus one whole square is equal to one then what about i power five i power five i can write as i power four into i i power four is one we already know one into i will be equal to i then i power six i power six is i power four into i square i power four is one and i square is minus one one into minus one will give you minus one then what about i power five i power five uh, how do we have found i power five right i power seven i power seven can be written as i power four into i cube 
I power 4 is 1 and I cube is minus I. We have already calculated 1 into minus I will be to minus I. I power 8. I power 8 can written as I power 4 into I power 4. I power 4 is 1, 1 into 1 is 1. So if I ask you what is I power 99, then what do you do? You cannot go on doing like this, right? So for that I will give you one formula. I power 4n, that is always equal to 1. I power 4n is equal to 1. How? I power 4n can be written as I power 4 whole power n. I power 4 is 1. 1 power n is equal to 1. Of course, when uh, n is natural number, then I power 4n plus 1. Say, I power 4n, how I could write it? I wrote it as I power 4 whole power n. I power 4 is 1. 1 power n is equal to 1. Now, I power 4n plus 1. 4n plus 1, that is equal to, I can write it as I power 4n into i. I power 4n is 1, 1 into i is equal to i. Then, i power 4n plus 2, i power 4n plus 2 is equal to i power 4n into i square. Okay? I power 4n is 1, i square is minus 1. 1 into minus 1 will give you minus. Then, i power 4n plus 3. i power 4n plus 3, I can write as i power 4n into i cube. I power 4 and already we know that it is 1 and I cube we have calculated is that here. I cube is minus i. So 1 into minus i that will give you minus i. So you remember this formula. Okay? Then whatever you want. See I asked you we want 99. So what do I do? 99. I power 99 can be written as I power 96 plus 3. Right? 99 can be written as 96 plus 3. And this is equal to I power 9. This is of the form. 96 is a multiple of 4, 24 into 4. So this is of the form i power 4n plus 3. Right? 4n, 96 can be written as Okay, I want i power 99, right? So I am writing it as i power 96 plus 3. That's equal to 96 can be written as 4 into 24 plus 3. So, this is of the form i power 4n plus 3. i power 4n plus 3 is equal to minus n. Okay? So, in this way, we can find out. So, remember these four. i power 4n is always equal to 1. i power 4n plus 1 equal to i. i power 4n plus 2 is equal to minus 1. And i power 4n plus 3 is equal to minus i. Then, now I will discuss uh, the product of uh, two complex numbers. So again I will uh, take those two complex numbers only. I1 Z1 is equal to X1 plus I1 and Z2 is equal to X2 plus I1. Then Z1 into Z2, I want to find the product of these two. X1 plus I1 into X2 plus I1, that's equal to multiply, we get x1 x2 plus i into x1 y2 plus i into x2 y1 plus in this step i y1 into i y2 I am finding that will give you i square into y1 y2. What is the value of i square? i square is equal to minus 1 we already know. So we get x1 x2 plus i i take common to change to x1 y2 plus x2 y1 i square is minus 1, so this term will become minus y1 y2. So, this is equal to x1 x2 minus y1 y2 plus i into x1 y2 plus x2 y1. So, now you can observe that z1 z2 is equal to x1 x2 minus y1 y2 plus i into x1 y2 plus x2 y2. So this is of the form x plus i y. Z1 z2 is equal to x plus i y. So this is also a complex number. From this we can conclude that the product of two complex numbers is also a complex number. Let us say how to get the quotient of two complex numbers. Quotient of uh, two complex numbers z1 by z2 will find. Of course, as you think that z2 is not equal to c. Okay. That's equal to x1 plus i y1 divided by x2 plus i y2. x1 plus uh, i y1 divided by 
x2 plus i y2. Now for this, I will multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator. What is the denominator here? x2 plus i y2. You multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator. Conjugate of the denominator. Denominator is x2 plus i y2. Its conjugate is x2 minus i y2. So I am multiplying and dividing by x2 minus i y2. Okay. That's it. Now I will multiply. Simplify. In the numerator, I am getting x1 x2 minus i into x1 y2 plus i into x2 y1 minus i square into y1 y2 divided by in the denominator x2 plus i y2 into x2 minus i y2 it's of the form a plus b into a minus b that's equal to a square minus b square which will give you x2 square minus i y2 whole square that's equal to here uh, x1 x2 this i square will become minus 1 already minus is there so it will be plus here plus y1 y2 i will write that term first then from the next two terms i will take i as a common factor then we have x2 y1 minus x1 y2 now look at the denominator here x2 square will remain as it is and here you will have i square into y2 square i square is minus 1 here we have a minus sign here minus into minus y y2 square will become plus y2 square so the denominator will become x2 square plus y2 square so you can split it into two terms sir. this factor divided by this denominator the sign into this factor divided by this denominator that will give you x1 x2 plus y1 y2 divided by x2 square plus y2 square plus i into x1 x2 y1 minus x1 y2 divided by x2 square plus y2 square. So now also you can observe that it is of the form a plus ib or should I say x plus iy. It's of the form x plus iy. So this is also a complex number. From this we can say that the product of two com sorry the quotient of two complex numbers is also a complex number. Conjugate of a complex number. Conjugate we discussed already. If uh, z is express i y, then z bar is equal to x minus i y. Then what about z plus z bar? Z plus z bar is equal to if I add these two equations, when I add them, this i y gets cancelled. X plus x will give you two x. So, z plus z bar is equal to 2 into x, I can write it as real part of z. So, z plus z bar can be written as 2 into real part of z. Now, I will subtract these two, z minus z bar. z minus z bar, if I subtract these two, x plus i y minus of x minus i y. That is equal to x x is cancelled here i y minus or minus i y to the plus i y that's equal to 2 i y okay so you can write this uh, z minus z bar as 2 i into imaginary part of z okay so z plus z bar is equal to 2 into real part of z and z minus z bar is 2 i into imaginary part of z then Z1 plus uh, Z2 whole bar is equal to Z1 bar into Z2 Then uh, Z1 minus Z2 whole bar that is also equal to Z1 bar minus Z2 bar Then product also it is true Z1 Z2 whole bar is equal to Z1 bar into Z2 bar Then denominator quotient uh, Z1 by Z2 whole bar is equal to 
set one bar divided by z2 bar. Of course, assuming that z2 is a non-zero complex number. Okay, then every complex number can be represented in a Cartesian plane. We can represent every complex number in our two-dimensional plane, x, y plane. How it is? Let me explain. I am taking z as x plus y. So this is represented by the order pair x comma y. So in our complex plane, this or the Cartesian plane. X comma y. Let us say this distance is x and uh, this distance is y. And this point is represented by x comma y, represented by the order of pair x comma y. So every complex number can be represented on the two-dimensional plane, Cartesian plane. So this plane, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. As you know, this is the positive x-axis, negative x-axis, positive y-axis, and negative y-axis. This plane is also called as the complex plane. Okay? Or one more name for that is, is also called as the Arden plane. Okay? Cartesian plane or the complex plane or the Arden plane. Okay. Now, if I take this point over here, whose coordinates are 0, 0. So that represents the 0 complex number. 0 complex number means 0 plus i into 0. Or if you want to get right, 0 minus i into 0 which is represented by the point at 0, 0. Then, if I take, uh, for example, if I take 3, 3 is a complex number which is purely real. So, that means its imaginary part is 0. I am writing 3 as a 3 plus i into 0. So, this complex number is represented by the point at 3, 0. So, where does 3, 0 lie? So, where here? 3, 0. It lies on positive x-axis. Right? So, this x-axis is called, is also called as the real axis and y axis is also called as the imaginary axis. Why it is so, let me explain. Let me take some complex numbers which are purely imaginary. I will take some complex numbers which are purely imaginary. Purely imaginary means a complex number whose real part is 0. So, I am talking about say 2i, 4i, 6i, minus 2i, minus 7i, minus 9i. Let me plot these points, these complex numbers. I want to represent these complex numbers on the Cartesian plane. So 2i is nothing but 0 plus 2i. So this complex number is represented by the point 0, 2. Similarly, 4i is represented by the point 0, 4, 0, 6 here, 0, minus 2, 0, minus 7, and 0, minus 9. Let me plot them on the Cartesian plane. See those points. 0, 2 is somewhere here. 0, 4 is here. 0, 6 is here. Let me explain it. This point is 0, 6. There is 0, minus 2 here or negative y axis. 0, minus 7 is here. 0, minus 9 here. Now look at all these complex numbers. I have taken all these complex numbers that are purely imaginary and then I wanted to show them, I wanted to represent them on the Cartesian plane. We have seen that all of those points lie on y-axis. Therefore, y-axis is also called as the imaginary axis. X-axis is called the real axis and y-axis is called the imaginary axis. Okay. Next, uh, let us say the modulus of the complex Modulus. If z is equal to x plus i y, then modulus of z is given by if z is equal to x plus i y, then modulus of z is equal to square root of x square plus y square. So if I take uh, z is equal to 4 plus 3i, then mod z is equal to root of x square plus y square. 4 square plus 3 square is equal to 5 root of that. 4 square is 16 and 3 square is 9 and 16 plus 9 25 root 25 is 5. Okay. Now mod z is also equal to modulus of z bar. How it is? Let me explain you. I will explain by this uh, example. Okay? z is equal to 4 plus 3i we have. So z bar is equal to 4 minus 3i. The conjugate of z. Now modulus of z bar I know. 
that is equal to square root of how do you define modulus if z is equal to x plus i y modulus of z is defined as square root of x square plus y square so modulus of z bar i y square root of x square plus y square x is 4 so x square is 4 square y is minus 3 y square is minus 3 whole square this 4 square is 16 minus 3 whole square will give you 9 16 plus 9 is 25 the of that is 5 so here you observe that uh, modulus of z is same as modulus of z bar not only that you will also see mod z is equal to modulus of minus z is equal to modulus of z bar is equal to modulus of minus z bar the remaining two you can try ok then um, what is the geometrical significance of this geometrically this modulus of z uses the distance of the point where this complex number is represented on the plane from the origin if i am taking z is equal to x plus i y x plus i y assuming that uh, x and y are positive here i will take that point here let us say this point is x comma y okay. this is our x axis or variable axis this is the y axis here is the origin the point of intersection of x and y axis now I have taken the complex number z as x plus i y. So I want to represent it on the Cartesian plane. So that is represented by the ordered pair x comma y. I denote this point as p. p x comma y represents the complex number z is equal to x plus i y. Then this distance O p is called the modulus of z. O p is called the modulus of z. Look at the distance between them. OP. If I find use distance formula, O whose coordinates are 0, 0, OP is nothing but the uh, count of x square plus y square. So geometrically, modulus of a complex number gives the distance of that complex number which is which when represented on the plane from the origin. This distance gives us the modulus of a complex number. Okay. Then what is z into z bar? z into z bar z is equal to x plus i y z bar is uh, x minus i you know multiply this it looks like a plus b into a minus which is equal to a square minus b square so you get uh, x square minus i square y square i square is minus 1 minus i square root of plus 1 so this is equal to x square plus z into z bar is equal to x square plus y square that x square plus y square i can write it as a root of x square plus y square whole square okay i'm just writing x square plus y square square root of x square plus y square whole square so z into z bar is equal to root of x square plus y square is equal to mod z so this is equal to mod z whole square z into z bar is equal to mod z whole square Next, so if you have seen z into z bar is equal to mod z whole square. If z is equal to x plus i y, then z bar is equal to x minus i y. Modulus over. Now let us say what is the amplitude or the principal. So when we represent it on a plane. Say this point P x comma y represents the complex number. This angle, the angle made by the theta, the angle made by the line joining the point with the origin, with the positive direction of x axis in the anti-clockwise direction. This angle measured in the anti-clockwise direction is called the principal argument or theta principal argument or it's also called as amplitude of that complex number that amplitude must always be greater than minus pi less than or equal to pi principal argument 
principal argument or the amplitude must always lie in the center. Well, okay. So, how to find that? See, if that point lies in the first quadrant, then it's very simple. Then this distance is y, this distance is x. From this triangle, I can write that tan theta is equal to y by x. So, theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x. For example, if I am talking about 1 plus i root 3, let us say, I want to find the amplitude of 1 plus i root 3. 1 plus i root 3, here x is 1 and y is root. So, theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x root 3 by 1. So, tan inverse of root 3, you get tan inverse of root 3 is equal to pi by 3. This is the amplitude of 1 plus i root. So, if when we take the complex number in the first quadrant, say this point now, it is 1 comma root 3, 1 comma root 3, then this angle is pi by 3, which is Okay, well understood, easy. But if it's not necessary that the complex number must always lie in the first quadrant, right? it may lie anywhere. So now I give you a table where by looking at that table you can identify if it lies in first quadrant, how to find the value of theta, if it lies in second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Okay. See, Whatever the number, whatever the complex number is given, you take that as x plus i y. Then you find out alpha. Alpha, I will define alpha as tan inverse of modulus of y by x. Tan inverse of modulus of y by x. Okay, this is alpha. Then, theta. Theta is the amplitude. If it lies in first quadrant, then theta is equal to alpha. Okay. If it lies in second quadrant, then theta is equal to pi minus alpha. If it lies in the third quadrant, then theta is equal to alpha minus pi. If the complex number lies in the fourth quadrant, then theta is equal to minus alpha. This is what you have to do. Now, other than the quadrants, right, it may lie on positive x-axis, positive y-axis, negative x-axis, negative y-axis also. So, if it lies on positive x-axis, okay, positive x-axis, then the amplitude is 0. It is equal to 0 because angle, if the complex number observe, lies on positive x-axis, I call this as P, then OP, angle made by OP with the x-axis is 0. Then if it lies on negative x-axis, negative x-axis, negative x-axis means here, P is here, angle made by OP with the positive x-axis is 180, which is pi. Then positive y-axis, positive y-axis, positive y-axis, if it lies here, then amplitude is obvious, pi by 2. Then if it lies on negative y-axis, negative y axis, negative y axis means here, if it lies on negative y axis, then its amplitude is not 3 pi by 2, don't make that mistake, it should always lie in between uh, minus pi and pi, 3 pi by 2 does not lie in central, so if it lies on negative y axis, then its amplitude is minus pi by 2. Remember this table, very essential, very useful uh, in most problems, ok, I will repeat again. Whatever the complex number is given, you treat that as x plus i y. Identify where it lies, in which quadrant it lies. No, I don't think I need to explain that also. I mean, depending on x and y, if both are positive, it lies in first quadrant. If x is negative, y is positive, it lies in the second quadrant. If both are negative, it lies in third quadrant. If uh, x is positive and y is negative, it lies on the lies in the fourth quadrant. So, depending on where it lies, you determine what is theta. So, first you find out alpha, whatever will be x and y. Take alpha as a tan inverse of modulus of y by x. Find that first. After finding that, the amplitude is given by theta is equal to, if it lies in the first quadrant, theta is equal to alpha. If it lies in the second quadrant, theta is equal to pi minus alpha. If it lies in the third quadrant, theta is equal to alpha minus pi. If it lies in the fourth quadrant, theta is equal to minus alpha. 
if the complex number lies on positive x-axis. When does it lie on positive x-axis? A complex number lie on positive x-axis if its imaginary part is zero and the real part is positive. For a complex number, if the imaginary part is zero and the real part is positive, then it lies on positive x-axis. So when it lies on positive x-axis, what is the amplitude? Zero. Similarly, if it lies on negative x-axis, when it can lie on negative x-axis? A complex number can lie on negative x-axis if its uh, imaginary part is zero and real part is negative. Okay, real part is negative and imaginary part is zero. Then that complex number lies on negative x-axis. In that case, the amplitude will be pi. Okay. Then let us look at uh, positive y-axis. When does it lie on positive y-axis? A complex number lies on positive y-axis if its real part is zero because we all know that when uh, the, when x is zero, it lies on uh, y axis. Moreover, the equation of y axis is also x equal to zero, which I learned in geometry. Okay, so if the real part is zero and the imaginary part is positive, real part is zero, imaginary part is positive, means I'm talking about say 2i, 3i, 4i, 5i, etc., which are represented by the points 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 5, and so on. So they all lie on positive y-axis. I repeat, if the real part is zero and the imaginary part is positive, then the point lies on positive y-axis. Then the amplitude is pi by two. Okay. Then, if the real part is zero and the imaginary part is negative, real part is zero and the imaginary part is negative, then the complex number lies on negative y-axis. When it lies on negative y-axis, when a complex number lies on negative y-axis, then its amplitude is minus pi by 2. Okay, these are the things that you should remember as uh, you know, with respect to this amplitude. Now let us look at uh, polar form. Polar form, or it's also called as the modulus uh, amplitude form of a complex number. So, given a complex number, say z is equal to x y. How to write its modulus amplitude form or the polar form of that complex number? Z is equal to x plus y. First, you find out what is its modulus. Modulus mod z very easy, which is also denoted by r. That's equal to root of x square plus x. Then you find out theta. Theta is the amplitude or the principal argument. Okay. See, for all these theta, there is called the, the, we call them as the principal argument. Argument means any angle uh, you know, for uh, for this theta, for this amplitude, you add any multiple of 2 pi or subtract any multiple of 2 pi, all those we get, those are all called arguments for the general arguments. This is the principal argument or the amplitude. We are more interested with the principal argument only. Okay? So, because you know all the trigonometric functions for any of those angles, if I go on adding 2 pi or go on subtracting 2 pi, there will be no change in the value of all those trigonometric functions which you know. So, our interest lies on uh, uh, finding the principal argument or it's popularly known as uh, the amplitude. Okay, so let theta r be the modulus, which is given by root of x square plus y square, and uh, theta be the amplitude of that complex number. Then z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta. This is called the polar form of this complex number. Z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta. In short form, huh, we write this as r into cis theta. Cis theta is the short form of cos theta plus i sin theta. Don't think that uh, cis theta is another denominator function already in the present six only troubling us like anything. So don't think that uh, you know, this is a new denominator function, so it is not. Uh, cos theta plus i sin theta in short form we write as cis theta. So z is equal to r into cis theta. So whenever you want to find the polar form of a complex number, First, you have to find out the, the modulus and then the amplitude. If r is the modulus and theta is the amplitude, then the polar form is given by r cis theta or r into cos theta plus i sin theta. Is that clear? Okay. So, with that, I will stop today's class. Uh, we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Okay. So, in the next class, I will discuss some more synopsis and later on we will go to problems. Thank you.